We're gonna grab everything out of these buckets of mud. When we do, this thing is what we use to open it. And it's really important that this always, when you're not pulling mud out of here, that this go back on here. You don't have to push it down so that it has to be taken off with this again, because we're gonna be in and out of it all period long. But you do have to put it on just so it's like this, because if you don't, any mud that's on here is gonna dry and get crusty. And then all of this stuff, where there are like little ridges, those will dry. Everything down inside that will be wet, but all those ridges will be dry. And then when you go to scoop this out later, you're gonna scoop out all those little bits. Or if there's anything dry on the lid and you go like this at the end of the period, and you bang that down, all those fall down in there. When you try to use the mud to smooth out later, all those little bits are gonna drag right through there. So it's important that we don't let this dry out. The other thing that you guys need to know is that whatever you don't use at the end of the period does not ever go back in here. We don't ever put mud back in here uh, because it's gonna have contaminants and stuff in it. So let's say we're 10 minutes to cleanup time and you got one joint left to mud. You're not gonna fill this thing to the brim with mud because you know that most of that will get wasted. You're gonna try to be mindful of how much you think you're actually gonna use and just use that amount. Now, what do we call this thing again? Putting the knife. What's that? Taping knife. So when you're taking the final and you're asked um, what a taping knife is, it's not something you use to cut. It's something that you use to spread mud. Now, when I scoop this out and I throw it in here, this has been mixed up with, a, uh, with this mixer right here earlier because it was a little bit dry because this has been sitting for a year. Um, Normally, there's all kinds of air bubbles in it. So I'll take my six inch blade and I'll just run it through here and I'll knock all the air bubbles out of it. And if I don't do this as I'm trying to apply the mud, I'm gonna, I'm gonna notice that there's just all kinds of air bubbles in it, okay? So I've got my mud out. I'm gonna put my lid on immediately so it doesn't dry out. If you're doing this professionally, you're, you're using paper tape. There's no adhesive on this. What makes this stick to the wall? Uh, Mud, right? So I'm just gonna measure this out to get this ready. And then I'll measure this one out and get this one ready. So they're just sitting there, ready to go. Now, you notice I got two different kinds of joints here. This one's got my tapered edge. And this one is the edge with the butt joints. And so, I need to get enough mud on here that it will cover the back side of this and cause it to stick. So it doesn't really matter how I apply it, how neat I apply it. I just need to get it on there. Now my knife, when my knife is straight up and down, it is going to be pulling mud off. When it's laying down flat, it's going to spread it out. So if I'm trying to pull mud off, I'm going to put it straight up and down. If I want it to smear, then I lay it down. See how that smeared real nice? So I just get enough of that to cover. Then I take my tape uh, and I lay it so it's over top of the joint, right in the center. Now I gotta get all the mud, the excess mud out from under so that the only mud that's left behind is what is taping the tape or adhering the tape to the surface of the drywall. So now instead of going this way, I'm gonna go up with it. Now. As I scrape it out, I want you guys to know, if you start at the top of your wall and you run all the way down, by the time you get to the bottom, there's gonna be a great big bubble as that tape kind of rolls up and out. So what you'll do is you'll start in the middle and you'll go up, you'll start in the middle and you'll go down. So if I was doing that on a wall, I'd put it here, hold it so it can't move. See how I'm, I'm putting a lot of pressure, pulling everything out from behind it. Coming back this way. Pulling everything out behind it. I want to make sure I got it good. I'm going to run over the second time and just make sure that I got all the mud out. So now that is set nice and tight to the surface. Now I'm going to encapsulate that in one more coat of mud. So this, you can put it on thick. I want to spread this down to here. So I'm going to flex my knife and I'm just going to pull that down into the joint down here. Flex it, pull it down into the joint down here. So now I've got it for the most part covered. Now you'll notice as I was flexing it and running it down, you can start to see the edge of that taper, right? Now I just want to spread it. So I lay it really low and I run across like so. 
Now you can see the edge of my taper right here, right? You can't see the edge of the taper there. So I would flex my blade and run it down there so that it's up in the center, but tight on that edge. I've just taken all the excess off the edge. Now, if I run my knife down again, I should end up with something where it's completely coated. You see that little contaminant right there? This mud is a little, it's been sitting up there for a year. So it started to dry out. So we're gonna see some of that happen. In the end, you want it to be like this where you can't see any tape. One of the common mistakes you guys are gonna run into is where you, let's take this mud, we'll put it in here. Put another piece of tape on. Say I throw that in there. And I run it down this way, run it down this way. I didn't really push very hard right here. It's stuck, it's sticking, but I didn't push down very hard. Now watch what happens when I cover this with mud. As I wanted it to spread, notice I laid my knife down so I could pull it toward the other end, right? So as I, as I get this in here, I, I can get it in there as thick as I want, bend it so it catches that edge, flex it so it catches that edge, run, my, run it down nice and flat, run it across, What do you guys see? Tape. I can see the tape. If I if I put that in there and I can see that tape, I know I got a problem. Now I can easily fix that by just running this through here and pulling the mud back out from behind it. Now I throw the mud back on, spread it around. I can hit that edge if I want, hit this edge if I want, run my knife. I'm laying my life, my knife down nice and flat now because I want it to spread, not take it off. And when I get done, I should be able to see that this is firmly encapsulated, that the edges of the joint are visible right there. See a piece of debris. That's why we don't ever put anything back inside the, the mud box. The goal here is to have this so that your knife is run on top of the tapered edge all the way down and you got the tape fully completely encapsulated, right? So then down here, we've got a butt joint that we don't have that recess for the tape to sit down inside. So we know that what we're gonna have to do is throw our mud down. And we know like, like let's say I'm throwing my mud down through here and I don't have much mud right there, is that gonna stick? No, nope. nope, it's not gonna stick. Or if it's too thin where it's where I, where I got it, it's missing in parts. Like I'm gonna have issues. So I wanna make sure that I have ample mud for that tape to stick to. And I'm just gonna say this, if you're a professional, your mud's gonna be wetter than this. We're, we're making it a little drier than you'd be using it if you were a professional finisher, just because it's a little bit more difficult to work with and you're more likely to drop a big glob of it on your shoe if we make it wet. So put that in. Same thing, we're gonna pull all the excess up. See how it kind of rolls up like that? If I start all the way at the top of an eight foot wall and I come down, then I'm gonna have a big, huge bubble. All right, so we got all that out of there. Now we're just gonna take our mud. We're gonna put it on. This is where it, it, it ends up looking a little bit different. And I'm gonna say that when you guys do this, Get yourself into whatever position's comfortable. Like a lot of times I'll see somebody kind of doing something like this, or they're kind of working backwards. Whatever it takes to get your body into a position where you feel like you can, you can work it easily. In this case, I can just stand out here at the end. What you want to do is you need to create a coating over top of the tape that's high enough because you don't have that taper going down. It's high enough, it covers so that later you can fan that out with your 12 inch knife this way and your 12 inch knife this way. What you don't want to do is put this on here. I'm running out of mud, so I'm just going to 
I'm gonna make it narrower than I normally would. What you don't want is something like this, because I mean, that is 3 16 quarter inch thick. You'd have to taper that clear out here in order to make it so it didn't stick out like a sore thumb. So it's kind of a balancing act between getting enough mud on there so that it totally covers the tape and taking enough mud off that you don't have this really tall joint. Now, as far as the edges go, I don't really care if you got some ridges on the edge. I'm not worried about that. We will clean all that up later. So pull that off. I'm gonna just take a little bit more off. As I got down here, I noticed it was thin. So I laid my knife down and I laid what I was pulling right on that edge and now it's covered up. So as I go down, I can see that this is a little bit thin right here. And I just made that thicker there so I could pull some of that back down here and lay it right there. Now it's, it's completely covered. You can just slightly see a little bit here. Now, there's a little bit of a, a line right there. And I can tell you what that's caused by. When this drywall got uh, cut and put together, the edge was a little bit uh, jagged. And so it's creating a little bit of a bubble right there. If that happens to you, come grab me and I'll show you what we can do to fix it. If it's sticking up like that, um, there are some things that we can do. So if you happen to notice that it's created some kind of a bubble, grab me and I'll walk you through how to fix it. Again, I don't really care about how this edge looks over here because when I come back with my 12 inch taping knife and fade that in, I just want one flat um, joint up here that I can let that ride on here and let that ride on here. Over here, my six inch rides on this and this, right? This, I don't have anything for it to ride on, so I gotta do that kind of freehand. But then when I get my 12-incher out, it's gonna ride on this and this. 